After studying this module, we shall be able to understand the concept and history of discourse analysis. We shall also learn about the ways in which discourse analysis can be carried out. This module will also help you in knowing about the uses, merits and demerits of discourse analysis. After studying this module, you shall be able to know more about the definitions and history of discourse analysis. You will be able to learn how to carry out discourse analysis. You will be able to learn about the uses, the merits and the demerits of discourse analysis. The ways in which language and society interact lie at the heart of discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is centered on social interaction, the way discourse governs individuals' actions. The dialogue of ordinary conversations is its primary focus. Language in discourse analysis is seen as an interaction with society. Discourse analysis does not assume that language is in its essence communication, but it is social action. Discourse analysis assumes, at the most fundamental level, that truth and reality are not knowable through language. According to Stubbs, the term discourse analysis is very ambiguous. It refers to the linguistic analysis of naturally occurring connected speech or written discourse. Twenty years later, a leading exponent of discourse analysis in psychology provided a crisper, less convoluted definition of discourse analysis. According to Potter, Discourse analysis is the study of how talk and texts are used to perform actions. Edley said that the discourse analysis is a broadening church, an umbrella term for a wide variety of different analytical principles and practices. According to Potter, the following are its core features. Action orientation. According to Potter, 2003, Language is the most important context for the actions and interactions of people and they are embedded in the social practices such as making invitations. Situation. According to Potter, discourse is situated in a number of senses. Institutionally situated, discourse may take place in an institutional setting. For example, a counselling unit and is spoken by the person occupying a particular identity within that institution example receptionist, of all which is relevant to what is said. Sequentially situated, language is situated sequentially in discourse such that what is said at a given time is dependent on but not determined by what went before which in turn is relevant to what comes later. And rhetorically situated, segment of discourse may be situated within the context of a rhetorical process and so involves methods of resisting attempts to counter it such as claims that you would say that wouldn't you. Construction. Discourse according to Potter is both constructed and constituted. It is constructed from substantial blocks including categories, commonplace ideas and broader explanatory systems as well as words of course. It is constitutive in the sense that it can be build accounts in the world and also maintain these. In addition to these, Weatherall, Taylor and Yates in, 19, in 2001 added some more features of discourse analysis. Language is constructive or constitutive of social life. Through language, things are done such as building social relations, objects and views of the world. Meaning is produced in the context of language exchanges between people. There is no cultural storehouse of agreed definition of meanings which can be applied. In discourse analysis, researchers refer to co-production of meaning. In other words, the analyst needs to seek to understand the process by which meaning is created through language. For example, meaning can be regarded as a joint production of two or more individuals in conversation. Discursive practices is a phase used to describe the things that happen in language which achieve particular outcomes. A discursive yearner refers to the type of language which is under analytic consideration. Footing refers to whether the person speaking talks 
as if they are the author of what is being said, the subject of the words being said, or whether they are using the words of someone else, the footing change at different stages of any piece of text. Speech is a dialogical during talking we incorporate or combine into it things from other conversations. The following are in addition to the above and are taken from Potter and Wetherill, 1995. Rhetoric refers to the interest that discourse analysis has in how talk can be organized to be argumentatively more successful. Stake and accountability refers to the way in which people regard others as having a vested interest in what they do. Consequently, they impute motives to the actions of others which may help to dismiss what the other person has said. Talks and the other forms of discourse are regarded as the important sites for understanding typical psychological phenomena. It focuses on the discourse practices in the course of talk and writing. It identifies the resources which people use to achieve their ends through language. Let us look at the development of discourse analysis. The term discourse analysis was originated by Zelig Harris in a paper published in 1952. The study of discourse showed rapid growth in the 1960s and 70s, but only in the 80s it became a discipline in psychology. A classical and major route for the introduction of discourse analysis in psychology is the work of Jonathan Potter and Margaret Wetherill on Discourse and Social Psychology, Beyond Attitudes and Behavior, which was published in 1987. Another strand of discourse analysis which originated in the work of French academic Michel Foucault, Foucauldian discourse analysis made its first significant inroads into Anglo-American psychology in the 1970s. It is an alternative to the Potter and the Wetherill version of discourse analysis within psychology. What are the different ways of doing discourse analysis? Let us spend some time on discussing some of the ways of doing discourse analysis. There are different styles of doing discourse analysis. According to Potter, there is no single way of doing discourse analysis. Different kinds of studies involve different procedures, sometimes working intensively with a single transcript, at other times drawing on large corpus. Analysis is a craft that can be developed of sensitivity to the occasioned and the action-oriented, situated and constructed nature of discourse. Foucauldian Discourse Analysis Foucauldian Discourse Analysis is concerned with the language and its role in the constitution of social and psychological life. Foucauldian Discourse Analysis asks questions about the relationship between discourse and how people think or feel subjectivity, what they may do, practices, and material conditions within which such experiences may take place. The following are the steps involved in doing Foucauldian discourse analysis. Discursive construction. The first stage in analysis is concerned with the ways in which discursive objects are constructed. Which discursive object we focus on depends upon our research question. The first step involves the identification of different ways in the discursive object is constructed in the text. The object in Foucauldian discourse analysis is the topic under study which is primarily dependent on the research question being addressed. The object is treated in the text as having a range of different features and the task of the analyst is to identify the various ways in which the object is constructed in the text under consideration. So, the analyst needs to identify just where references to the object are to be found. There may be circumstances where the object is simply not intended by name, but it is implied. Simply highlighting them with a highlighter pen may be sufficient to locate such references and associated materials relevant to understanding the way in which the object is constructed. Discourses. The second stage of analysis aims to locate the various discursive constructions of the object within wider discourses. So, the analyst's task at this stage is to review the materials very carefully in order to identify the different discourses that are to be found in the data. 
Action orientation. The third stage of analysis involves a closer examination of the discursive contexts within which the different constructions of the object are being deployed. A focus on action orientation allows us to gain a clear understanding of what the various constructions of the discursive object are capable of achieving within the text. Positioning. A subject position within a discourse identifies a location for persons within the structure of rights, obligations and duties for those who use that repertoire. In other words, discourse constructs subjects as well as objects and as a result make available positions within networks of meaning which speakers can take up. Practice. This stage is concerned with the relationship between discourse and practice. It requires a systematic exploration of the ways in which discursive constructions and the subjects contained within them open up or close down opportunities for action. This stage maps the possibilities for action contained within the discursive construction identified in the text. Subjectivity. The final stage in the analysis explores the relationship between discourse and subjectivity. Discourse makes available certain ways of seeing the world and certain ways of being in the world. They construct a social as well as a psychological reality. This stage in the analysis traces the consequences of taking up various subject positions for the participants subjective experience. According to Potter, the steps in discourse analysis include gathering materials for analysis first, interviews and naturalistic observations or conversations are main types of data for discourse analysis. However, data from focus groups, the internet, newspapers, television and a wide range of the sources may on occasions be used. Second, recording and transcription. The function of transcription is to facilitate the analysis and communication with other researchers. Generating hypothesis. The word hypothesis indicates the researcher's need to develop ideas about what is going on in the social interaction in order to stimulate and guide their research ideas. Coding. It is a way of reducing a mass of transcription down into a number of descriptive notes which essentially summarizes the original data. The purpose of coding is to encourage line by line familiarity with data but more importantly it may be a start to the process of generating analytic ideas. The analysis. Potter discusses four aspects of the analysis. First, search for a pattern. The analyst may search through the body of data to establish how regularly a particular pattern occurs. If a pattern is common, then this adds strength to the analysis. Next, consider next turns. Understanding the next speaker's conversational turn has strong implications for the analyst's understanding of a segment of text. Next, focus on deviant cases. Deviant cases are simply parts of the discourse in which very different things seem to be happening compared with the normal pattern that otherwise seems to be emerging in the analysis. Understanding these cases may be analytically much more rewarding than if the usual pattern occurs. Focus on other kinds of material. There is a range of additional materials which could be brought into any particular analysis. Validating the analysis. According to Potter, some of the procedures used in validating the analysis are Participants' orientations. If a particular excerpt is given a particular interpretation by the analyst, it is important to see whether this interpretation is supported by how the next participant in the discourse responds. Deviant cases. These are used during the analysis but can also be used in the validation stage. Potter gives examples of news interviews where it has been shown that the interviewer is not held responsible for the views expressed in the interview. Coherence. We see whether the findings of the new study cohere with those of similar earlier studies. If yes, then this is evidence of validity. However, if the findings of the new study do not fit with those of earlier studies, then the research community may be justified in treating the new study with considerable caution. 
Readers' evaluations. A range of extracts indicate and illustrative of the researcher's analysis are included in the publications. This leaves the reader in a position to check the researcher's analysis in a way which is impossible with other research methods. Let us evaluate discourse analysis. Each method has its own limitations and advantages. In the same way, discourse analysis also has certain advantages and certain limitations. Let's just have a look at them. Advantages. Discourse analysis may be used for a variety of reasons. The technique can reveal often unspoken and unacknowledged aspects of human behavior, making salient either hidden or dominant discourses that maintain marginalized positions in society. They can reveal or help to construct a variety of new and alternative social subject positions that are available, which in itself can be very empowering to the most vulnerable individuals. Promoting health, reducing health inequalities, improving services for vulnerable people, increasing the availability and quality of drug treatment programs, and improving the mental health of the population are all ways in which discourse analysis may empower patients. Discourse analysis has a relevance and practical application at any given time, in any given place, and for any given people. Discourse analysis is context specific. Understanding the function of language and discourse enables positivist individual and social change. Some limitations of discourse analysis. We cannot theorize anything on the basis of discourse analysis. We cannot determine the abstract relationship between discourse and material reality. It does not provide definite answers. It is not a hard science, but an insight or knowledge based on continuous debate and argumentation. It is very difficult to understand nature of psychological phenomena. Therefore, discourse analysis cannot be called exclusively the meritorious method of research. So, in order to summarize, discourse analysis can be defined as analysis being the study of how talk and texts are used to perform actions. There are various features of discourse analysis such as action orientation, construction meaning, produced in the context of language and so on. Foucauldian discourse analysis involves six steps, which are discursive constructions, discourses, action orientations, positioning, practice and subjectivity. There are various advantages and limitations of discourse analysis. Merit of discourse analysis may include the techniques that can reveal often unspoken and unacknowledged aspects of human behavior, making salient either hidden or dominant discourses that maintain marginalized positions in society and demerits may include that we cannot determine the abstract relationship between discourse and material reality. Now let us summarize what we have learned in the module. Discourse analysis can be defined as analysis of the study of how talk and texts are used to perform actions. The ways in which language and society interact lie at the heart of discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is centered on social interaction, the way discourse governs individuals' actions. The term discourse analysis was originated by Zelig Harris in a paper published in 1952. The study of discourse showed rapid growth in the 60s and the 70s, but only in the 1980s it became a discipline in psychology. There are various features of discourse analysis that we have looked at such as action orientation, construction, meaning produced in the context of language and so on. According to Potter, the steps that we looked at in discourse analysis included gathering of materials for analysis, recording and transcription, generating of hypothesis, coding, the analysis and validating the analysis. The Foucauldian discourse analysis which we looked at involves six steps being discursive constructions, 
discourses, action orientation, positioning, practice and subjectivity. There are various advantages and limitations of discourse analysis that we looked at. The merit of discourse analysis, including the techniques that can reveal often unspoken and unacknowledged aspects of human behavior, making salient either hidden or dominant discourses that maintain marginalized positions in society. Amongst the demerits, we looked at that we cannot determine the abstract relationship between discourse and the material reality. First, let us look at the definition of discourse analysis. Discourse analysis can be defined as relationship between language and subjectivity reflecting course of action. According to Stubbs, the term discourse analysis is very ambiguous. It refers to the linguistic analysis of naturally occurring connected speech or written discourse. 20 years later, a leading exponent of discourse analysis in psychology provided a crisper, less convoluted definition of discourse analysis. According to Porter, discourse analysis is the study of how talk and texts are used to perform actions. The central focus of discourse analysis is the interaction between language and society. According to Porter, there are some core features of discourse analysis which includes First, action orientation. Language is the most important context for the actions and interactions of people and they are embedded in social practices such as making invitations. Second, situation. According to Porter, discourse is situated in a number of senses. Institutionally situated discourse may take place in an institutional setting, for example, a counseling unit, and is spoken by a person occupying a particular identity within that institution, example, receptionist, all of which is relevant to what is said. Sequentially situated language is situated sequentially in discourse such that what is said at a given time is dependent on, but not determined by, what went before, which in turn is relevant to what comes later, and Rhetorically situated segment of discourse may be situated within the context of a rhetorical process and so involve methods of resisting attempts to counter it, such as claims that you would say that, wouldn't you? Construction. Discourse, according to Porter, is both constructed and constitutive. It is constructed from substantial blocks including categories, commonplace ideas and broader explanatory systems as well as words, of course. It is constitutive in the sense that it can build accounts in the world and also maintain these. The term discourse analysis was originated by Zelig Harris in a paper published in 1952. The study of discourse showed rapid growth in the 1960s and 1970s, but only in 1980s it became a discipline in psychology. A classical and major route for the introduction of discourse analysis in psychology is the work of Jonathan Potter and Margaret Wetherill on discourse and social psychology beyond attitudes and behavior, which was published in 1987. The another strand of discourse analysis originated in the work of the French academic Michel Foucault. Foucauldian discourse analysis made its first significant inroads into Anglo-American psychology in the 1970s. It is an alternative to the Potter and Wetherill version of discourse analysis within psychology. Here we will focus on two ways of doing discourse analysis, the one given by Potter in 2003 and the other Foucauldian discourse analysis summarized by Willig in 2008. Another way to do discourse analysis is given by Potter which includes the following steps. Gathering materials for analysis. Interviews and naturalistic conversation are main types of data for discourse analysis. However, data from focus group, the internet, newspapers, television and a wide range of the sources may on occasion be used. Recording and transcription. The function of transcription is to facilitate the analysis and communication with other researchers. Generating hypothesis. The word hypothesis indicate the researchers need to develop ideas about what is going on in the social interaction in order to stimulate and guide their research ideas. Coding. It is a way of reducing a mass of transcription down into a number of descriptive notes which essentially summarize the original data. The purpose of coding is to encourage line-by-line -line familiarity with data, but more importantly, it may be a start to the process of generating analytic ideas. 
the analysis. Porter discusses four aspects of the analysis. First, search for a pattern. The analyst may search through the body of data to establish how regularly a particular pattern occurs. If a pattern is common, then this adds strength to the analysis. Second, consider next turns. Understanding the next speaker's conversational turn has strong implications for the analyst's understanding of a segment of text. Third, focus on deviant cases. Deviant cases are simply parts of the discourse in which very different things seem to be happening compared with the normal patterns that otherwise seem to be emerging in the analysis. Understanding these cases may be analytically much more rewarding than if the usual pattern occurs. Fourth, focus on other kinds of material. There is a range of additional materials which could be brought into any particular analysis. Validating the analysis. According to Porter, some of the procedures used in validating the analysis are participants orientations. If a particular excerpt is given a particular interpretation by the analyst, it is important to see whether this interpretation is supported by how the next participant in the discourse responds. Deviant cases. These can also be used in the validation stage. Porter gives the example of news interviews where it has been shown that the interviewer is not held responsible for the views expressed in the interview. Coherence. We see whether the findings of a new study cohere with those of similar earlier studies. If yes, then this is evidence of validity. However, if the findings of the new study do not fit with those of earlier studies, then the research community may be justified in treating the new study with considerable caution. Readers' evaluations. A range of extracts, indicative and illustrative of the researcher's analysis, are included in the publications. This leaves the reader in a position to check the researcher's analysis in a way which is impossible with other research methods. A summary of Porter's steps in discourse analysis are gathering materials for analysis, recording and transcription, generating hypotheses, coding, the building of a collection, the analysis, validating the analysis. Foucauldian discourse analysis. According to Willig in 2008, there are six steps involved in carrying out Foucauldian discourse analysis. The six steps are discursive constructions. The first step involves the identification of different ways in the discursive object is constructed in the text. Discourses. The second stage of analysis aims to locate the various discursive constructions of the object within wider discourses. Action orientation. The third stage of analysis involves a closer examination of the discursive context within which the different constructions of the object are being deployed. Positioning. Subject position within a discourse identifies a location for persons within the structure of rights, obligations, and duties for those who use the repertoire. Practice. This stage is concerned with the relationship between discourse and practice. It requires a systematic exploration of the ways in which discursive constructions and the subjects contained within them open up and or close down opportunities for action. Subjectivity. The final stage in the analysis explores the relationship between discourse and subjectivity. Discourses make available certain ways of seeing the world and certain ways of being in the world. A summary of Foucauldian discourse analysis. Discursive constructions, discourses, action orientation, positioning, practice. Following are the advantages of discourse analysis. Discourse analysis reveals the unspoken and unacknowledged aspect of human behavior. They help to construct a variety of new and alternative social subjects position that are available. Discourse analysis is context specific, that is it has relevance and practical application at any given time or any given place. Help in understanding the function of language and enable positive individual and social change. Limitation of discourse analysis. We cannot theorize anything on the basis of discourse analysis. We cannot determine the abstract relationship between discourse and material reality. It does not provide definite answers. It is not a hard science, but an insight or knowledge based on continuous debate and argumentation. It is very difficult to understand nature of psychological phenomenon. Therefore, discourse analysis cannot be called exclusively the meritorious method of research.
To summarize, discourse analysis is the study of how talks and texts are used to perform action. The central focus of discourse analysis is the interaction between language and society. According to Potter, there are some core features of discourse analysis which includes action orientation, constructions and situation. There are two ways of conducting discourse analysis, the one given by Potter in 2003 and the other is Foucauldian discourse analysis summarized by Willig in 2008. Discourse analysis can be used for a variety of reasons such as it reveals unspoken and unacknowledged aspects of human behavior. It has a relevance and practical application at any given place or time. It helps in understanding language and enable positive individual and social changes. Although discourse analysis has a lot of advantages, but it is not free from criticism. Limitations of discourse analysis includes, it doesn't provide definite answers. We cannot determine the abstract relationship between discourses and material reality.